I I'm a head in. Bam ba da dum bum bum ba da dum ba da bum. Gotta change it so it doesn't sound the same. Gotta change it so it doesn't sound the same. Bum ba da dum bum bum. <laughs> We're back in the studio. I didn't like the bed setup. I thought it'd be cool. I don't like it anymore. But my god, what has happened in the past three days? 40k is real. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Lots has happened in terms of 40k. Games Workshop are doing a daily live stream now. So they're doing like a 30 minute live stream to give some tidbits of information about what's happening with the new 40k or 40k 9th edition. And I think today being Wednesday. Yes. Yes. Wednesday. Welcome. <laughs> today recording Wednesday. This has been like the biggest change overall, the biggest information drop that we've seen in terms of competitive play and what general like match play games of Warhammer are going to look like um, come, come 9th edition. So there's been a massive overhaul of match play missions, which is great because match play missions currently don't really work very well because they're a little bit binary, a little bit one-sided. ITC has kind of like filled that hole that Games Workshop left of competitive mission packs where you kind of have a primary mission, which is kill and hold me objectives, and they have secondary missions, which which are dependent on what army you're playing. Well, Games Workshop have kind of straight up ripped that, which is great, and made it their own, which is also great. During the live stream, they actually said that you'd get a primary mission, which is kind of listed on your mission pack or mission briefing or data mission data slate. I don't know what they're going to call it yet. But then you also get secondaries that are going to be dependent on your army that you choose before the game starts. So if your army is a killy army, you go for killy ones, like for example, kill characters which is one example which they call assassinate so you score points every time you kill character in itc we already have headhunter which is kill characters for the same thing they also talked about certain units being able to grab objectives and forgo shooting forgo fighting to gain points or raise the banner which sounds really cool all i can think of is that scene from the dawn of war trailer And you get points for that and we already have something like that it's called engineers in itc and the other one was to hold the center of the board and then score that if there's no enemy units within range of the center of the board a certain amount of inches and we have that it's called king of the hill so what does it mean games workshop have taken an eternal mission eternal war mission given it some secondaries and called it their new mission pack which is exactly what the nova mission pack is and funnily enough the guy who is in charge of all the missions now ran nova for 10 years he started it mike brand so what do I think of this change? I think this is an absolutely fantastic change to the game. Everyone, every tournament should run the same mission pack. It might get a little bit stale, but if they keep them fresh and they change them up enough, it's not going to get stale. And when you go to a tournament, you know what type of mission you're going to be playing. So this is great, honestly. Like, a lot of people are kind of like, mm, I don't like ITC. And it's like, yeah, you might not like ITC, but this mission you might really enjoy because it is a little bit of both. It's Eternal War and ITC smashed together for an ultimate demon baby which is just like kind of gurgling but it's gurgling flowers now it's not a demon it's an angel and it's beautiful and you want to take it home and marry it so this obviously it sounds amazing right I think, again we're getting nova star missions in the rule book most tournaments are probably going to play this because reese on signals of the front line kind of said that itc will have a mission pack but it won't be supported anymore you can still use it if you want to but really they're just going to say use their rule book missions and why are they saying that it's because Mike Brandt and Reese and the FLG team came together, made these missions, made the Demon Flower Baby. So obviously they're going to promote that and they're going to say, use this now, don't use this other one, which is great. Again, as I said, it just it just means that everything's in one place. You don't be like, I'm going to I want to go to a tournament. I bought my rules book. I brought my codex. What else do I need? Oh, you need to download this 25 page document and an FAQ. And it's like it's just one less piece of paper and it's all going to be there in your book or in the chapter approved or whatever they do in the future. So this is really good. And then what they've also done, they've, they've kind of talked about command points at the same time. They talked about how combat patrol is 500 points to get three CP. Incursion's a thousand, but most importantly, strike force is 2000 and you get 12 command points. So rather than having three battalions to get 15 plus three, now you're just gonna have 12. It doesn't matter how many detachments or how many units you have in your army. We don't know how detachments is gonna change how building 
lists or how many CP you're going to have. We know that allies are going to take CP away from you, but we don't really know what list building looks like right now, which is kind of annoying. It's kind of like, stop drip feeding stuff to me. Just give it to me all at once. But, so basically, for every 500 points you're playing, you get an extra three command points or less than three command points. So, and one of the sentences said, they're going back to missions. Even though each mission shares a primary objective, secondary objectives are asymmetrical and are actually chosen by the player themselves. The primary represents the shared story on the battlefield, while the secondary is to represent your army's theme and balance tough matchups. So again, you choose a certain secondary depending on what you want, and they, they've introduced this thing called action, so your unit won't just have to move and shoot. They'll be able to do something which is different to killing stuff or moving, and they'll be able to gain points for doing that. So some of the secondary objectives are talked about purge the enemy or assassinate. So score three rich points at the end of the battle for each enemy character that is destroyed. So they're not gone for you get one point up to a maximum of four. They've kind of got a different thing and they can say that they've got a limitation of 15 victory points rather than four but for this one you score three points so you only have to kill five characters to max that out when you're instructed to select the secondary objectives you can select any presented here in addition to any secondary objectives listed on the mission you are playing you can score no more than 50, 15 victory points for each secondary objective you select during the mission any excess victory points awarded are discounted each secondary objective listed below has a category e.g purge the enemy when so you select a secondary objective you cannot choose more than one from each character category so you're gonna you're not gonna be able to spam all the kill ones because you're a killing army you've got to split up like we've seen in itc already currently you can only take one search and destroy one maneuver and then old school or one or the other so you can't go three search and destroy so this is a really really nice change and it kind of clarifies those categories nicely we have purge the enemy we have no respite no mercy no respite and we have battlefield supremacy and we have warpcraft and we have shadow operations so it does sound like we're going to have a lot to choose from we have thin their ranks end game objective you to select this objective keep a tally of kill points each time an enemy model is destroyed add one to this tally add 10 to this tally instead if the model was great <laughs> we don't know anymore i don't i don't really like that they're kind of showing off these objectives but they're actually not showing you anything and this is kind of annoying because i, I want to analyze what they're putting out and i want to be able to talk about it and talk about how i think it's going to affect how people build lists or how people put out armies or how the missions are going to act as a whole but they've kind of just half given it here so it's like itc it's like nova it's like eternal or all slammed together somehow we only see half of it but we do know that the three main ones are assassinate so kill enemy characters we have king of the hill which they've called something else i don't know what they've called that and then we have engineers which is called raise the banner so that sounds really cool i really like the idea of that one again for the trailer They've also shown a new mission. This looks really cool. Eternal War Dash Strike Force. So what they're saying is it's an Eternal War mission, which means it's designed for match play. It says Strike Force, which means it's designed for 2,000 points. So it kind of shows you you have primary objectives and you have secondary objectives. The primary objective is hold an objective, control two objectives, or control more than your opponent. So it's kind of like ITC hold more, essentially. You kind of get points for holding. You get points for holding more, which is great. There isn't any kill mission in this, but obviously you have secondary objectives where you can choose kill missions, for example. You can choose one kill mission. It says in this mission, when the players are selecting their secondary objectives, they can, if they wish, choose one of them to be the siphon power. And this is essentially why you have sappers. So you put an objective, a unit on an objective around the board, you drain it, you siphon the power, you can't shoot, but you can score points for that objective. So it says that, we, well, to be fair, it actually doesn't say whether we can shoot, but it says it's an action, and we don't know if an action is shoot or an action is fight, for example. It also doesn't say how many secondaries you choose, so we don't know if this is going to be limited to mission or eternal war as a whole, kind of like you choose three secondaries or you choose five secondaries. We don't really know. But all we know is we have a primary objective and we have secondary objectives that we choose before the start of the game. The thing as well with these mission sheets, it kind of has the deployment set out for you. So you will have your own mission deployment type for each mission, which is really cool. And also all of the measurements are laid out from the center of the board. So a lot of people are kind of big braining and trying to measure out and saying, oh, look, it's 4.5. It's like this table size literally doesn't matter because you're measuring from the center rather than the edge like we always we always used to. You can kind of see that it doesn't matter what board size you play on, the objectives will always be in the same place. So you can play on a 2x2 two two if you wanted to, or you can play on a, I don't know, 20x40 foot board if you like. So the objectives are still going to be 10 inches apart from the center or 20 inches apart. The other time you get a problem, as Falcon pointed out, thanks Falcon, that if you wanted to play on less than 20 inch board, then go for it. But you can't play this mission, but also how the hell do you fit 2,000 points on that board? I don't know. We also know that the secondaries are going to be in the, the core rulebook, but also you're going to get faction-specific ones later down the line. So I imagine we'll see Necrons to be the first one with secondary missions that are unique to the army, which are more 
fluffy or more narrative, for example. But again, this adds a new layer of problems to balancing the game because if I have, I'm using standard secondary missions and then I'm playing against Necrons, which have three that are really good, that are really easy to score, then I'm, I'm playing it on the back foot already. So it's going to be interesting how they balance that out. I'm always a bit skeptical. I think everyone should be kind of playing the same mission, not having unique missions. You, you kind of have that problem in Maelstrom where you have like ridiculous cards for one faction, for example, a thousand suns, score, score points for every psychic power you cast after the third one. And it's just like, you've just scored nine points and I've got this one, which is hold two objects if I get D3. And it's like, my card is objectively harder to score than yours if I have to move across the battlefield. But you can literally sit at the back of the board, cast the power, it doesn't actually have to do anything, but you cast the power by rolling two dice and add nine to it and you score nine points which is a little bit obnoxious again imperial fists have a good one choose three objectives get a point if you hold one get like five points if you hold fat three of them you can choose them all anywhere on the board so it's gonna be interesting how they balance these missions that you're giving specifically for the faction and against the rest of the game that might not have them just yet because we are going to see ninth edition codexes quite quickly but we're not going to see them quickly enough that everyone's going to be playing new secondary missions all at the same time we're going to see this way you're all playing rule book secondary missions but over time people start to get their own and again they want to sell models they want you to buy these books so they are going to be easier to score you'll be able to do better with them but you're going to have this balancing problem overall which is really annoying and i don't know if they do notice a balancing problem whether these faction specific secondaries are going to get addressed later but then that adds in an faq which everyone hates so it's just like uh. We've also seen intercessors and cultists are going up in points, but also the rest of the game is going up in points, which is good because games are lasting longer now. A tournament is a three hour round. It's not two and a half hours anymore. And units, whilst it's annoying that units will go up in points, you'd be like, oh man, don't know. The fact that everything's going up means also you can balance it better. Now, why, why do I say that? Because for example, you've got chaos cultists, which are like four points now and you've got like conscripts which are probably four points maybe or something like that and objectively though those units are different they shouldn't be the same amount of points but you can't make one of them cheaper because they, if you make that unit cheaper then people will spam it more if you made cultists two points people would be running hundreds of them if not thousands literally whereas if you made cultists more expensive because they're better than a, a conscript then they're not going to run them because it's a crap unit and it shouldn't be more than four points but if they raise everything up you can kind of more finely tune each unit to where it should ba be balanced on in the game into Assessor squad going up three points is fine and cultist maybe going up two points maybe you don't like that do you not like that is that really annoying have you got hundreds of cultists and you just wanted to run them even though hordes are going to get nerfed in the next edition because blast units blast weapons are just going to obliterate them in one shot by the sounds of it but again whilst everything goes up some stuff might stay the same so essentially it's gone down in points compared to everything else which is only good i mean look at tactical squads they can't make them much cheaper because they're actually quite good with a three up save and a nice gun but against intercessors, it's the obvious choice is to take an intercessor because the points are so close. Whereas now an intercessor is 20 points and maybe a tactical marine has stayed at 11 points. That's a really big change. That's nearly double for an extra wound and a different gun, which is quite a lot. So you might see stuff like tactical marines coming back if they stay at the same points. But you also might not. They might also go up point in points the same amount. Or they might go up percentage of the amount. So they go up 10%. So they're now 12 points while intercessors are 20. So there's a quite big change in there. So you'll be, able, you'll be able to balance the smaller units easier. The bigger units are going to go up in points. That's obvious. And you, there isn't much you can do about their way of balancing because they're already quite well balanced with each other. Troops have always been an issue because they're so low in points. So overall, what they want to do is raise the points on everything to make the games quicker because you have less models and also be able to finely tune each unit towards another unit. Again, cultists and conscripts being one example. They've also talked about the app. It's going to come out. You're going to be able to build lists on it. You're going to be able to do whatever on it. We don't really know. They've been talking about this app for like four years now. So hopefully when it does come out on day one, it is good. It is all it's lived up for. F in the chat for Battlescribe if it is good and everyone's playing on it. But we will see. Battlescribe has been really good so far for list writing. It's got so good in the past few years. It's a bit insane compared to what it used to be. There's obviously discords that are kind of like keeping up with updating the information. So the rules are like 99% correct. And it is so cheap to run. It's like a pound a year or something like that. So if you're using Battlescribe, consider supporting them because they might be in a rough spot where I don't know if people do this for a living or it's a side hobby, but you know, they might struggle soon because of this new app that's coming out and everyone, because it's Games Workshop, everyone will jump on it. It'll be the best app ever, even though it might even be crap, but we don't know. 
But yeah, there's my thoughts. I think the new missions sound really, really good. I'm a massive fan of ITC. If you've been watching, if you've been with the channel for a while, I always play ITC because I think it's really enjoyable. I really enjoy competitive 40k. And overall, I think it's just going to be good changes. I'm, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Do you like the sound of these missions? What do you think about points changing? Again, I've said what I think, but I love having a chat to what you guys think. I do answer to every single comment. I try my best anyway. I do. There is quite a few these days. I want to say a massive thank you to anyone who's already subscribed because we have had an amazing boost this past 28 days and I want to be able to get that even further or like five months combined, by the way. <laughs> so if you are liking the video, consider liking it, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification. It's like not less than 6% of people have the bell notifications on you'll always know when there's a new video going out but hopefully we can kind of keep up the momentum keep up the hype and i'm really really excited for night finish i'm really excited to share that excitement with you please subscribe if you can if you disliked it do dislike the video but tell me why you disliked it that'd be really cool i can kind of like build on it someone complained about the weird glare on the camera so i've got turned these lights off but also i'm getting some cool lights in the background which would be really nice to look at otherwise guys have a fantastic day this has been midweek coffee time i guess i don't really call these coffee time maybe i should let me know do these count it's coffee time it's coffee time only on a sunday this is a little bit faster fast paced a little bit blah 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 but there we go i don't know i'm rambling you have a great day i'm gonna go have a coffee i obviously need one um yeah